Zero Mile is a Terminus Media production. If you would like to know more about Terminus Media, please head on over to TerminusMedia.com. Now, on with your show. Hi, welcome to Zero Mile, your final stop in Atlanta's geek culture. I'm your host, Kelly McDaniel, and these are my co-hosts. Zonga Fielding. And I'm Chris Callen. And we are here to bring you the movie news of the week. So let's go ahead and get started and see what pulls into the station, guys. All right, we've got some new costumes for the Justice League movie, and you can catch our reaction video to the trailer on our channel so you can see how overwhelmed, underwhelmed, or just whelmed we were. Uh, so we get a new Batfleck costume, yeah. which is kind of a color palette swap. So instead of the, the gray with the black bat logo, he's got a black suit with a gray bat logo that looks to be slightly reflective. Um, we've got Aquaman putting a shirt on. Sorry, ladies. Uh, How long will the shirt actually be on? That is the key. I don't know. So will all, he wear it in water? All the buzz I've seen for the movie is because Aquaman doesn't wear a shirt. So, so Well, it is Jason we Momoa. Just, yeah, so we all... We, the trailer gives you the entire moment that he has a shirt on. Yeah, it's yeah. probably going to be one of those like he shows up in costume, gets shot, and, like rips it off. To, <clears throat> for some reason, the less armor you wear, the more powerful you are. It's kind of a fantasy Obviously. trope. But, yeah. um, and then, of course, you know, we get some better shots of Cyborg uh, and The Flash and Wonder Woman. It was the only costume I like out of that entire lineup. Also, I feel like her costume is the only one that hasn't changed. Like, I'm sure that there have been minor tweaks to it, but overall... Her look stays the same. Everyone seems to like yeah, have I, something different every single time. I can understand Batman constantly like <laughs> tweaking the bat suit and like his, it's damage. Well, he's also yeah. rich, and I mean, he also has themed bat suits, yeah. especially if you collected the action figures back in the day. Yeah, like Rainbow Batman from classic Golden Era Batman. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's a bat suit for every situation. Everything. So shifting gears a bit, um, and Netflix. I guess movie news. We have the trailer drop of, of course, the live action Death Note, I guess, movie series thing going on. It was certainly quick and to the point. It was like, hey guys, this is Death Note. Here are some of the scenes from the manga and the anime in the trailer. And it was okay to say the least um it certainly is i guess death note or maybe death note in name only <laughs> of course you they're the Amer they're of course westernizing and americanizing it where you instead of getting like your japanese names of your japanese characters you get instead of light yagami you get light turner um, sounds like timmy turner <laughs> yeah um of course william defoe is playing the shinigami or I guess Death Got Ryuk, and of course, it's Death Note, it's a thing. I have kind of low expectations of it, given what the trailer showed, but yeah, it's it exists. I mean, at least if you want equal parts menacing and sassy, Willem Dafoe is perfect for that. That is very yeah. true. And that is kind of Ryuk as a character. I mean, I seeing William Dafoe in, like, in the casting... It kind of made me feel a little bit better about it, but obviously I feel like everyone's going to hold their reservations until it comes out. Of course, which is what you should do instead of get on like a rage train or, you know, whatever. Hype train or rage train, rage you know. Train. It's just not how the internet works, Ricky. <laughs> it's not. I hope it works. <laughs> well, in <clears throat> something I don't want to call Han Solo news, but Han Solo news, uh, Woody Harrelson is talking and rambling. Um, on Jimmy Fallon, he basically confirmed that his character's name is Beckett, and it is not Garrus Strike, um, as we came to believe. However, as he was describing his, char his character Beckett, mm -hmm. it sounds a lot like Garrus Strike. Um, as you may know, um, Garrus Strike was a criminal mentor to Han Solo, um, and it might provide a little bit of backstory into Beckett's character. As we know in the ex uh, Expanded Universe, the EU, that is no longer technically canon. Thank you, Disney. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, Strike was uh, Fagin to Han's art artful dodger, um, and Han Solo uh, basically kind of looked up to him and learned the ropes. What? No, what did I laugh about? No, sorry. Okay, what? Yes. Anyway, um, 
you know, Han Solo really looked up to him, but then Garrus killed his adoptive mother, who was a Wookiee. Um, so I'm kind of, while this is on the stranger side of the EU, I feel like this is right up Disney's alley to use this story because, I mean, I'm, well, more money, but I'm also wondering if they'll use a Phil, Phil Collins montage. Because of Wookiee Mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wookiee Mom. Um, Something Tarzan like... reference. It is. Mm. Subtle okay, Tarzan I was, reference. I was, I had this whole like something <laughs> yeah, in the air um, tonight thing going on. But anyway. I, I, I am just, I hate this movie so far. Everything about it is wrong. Everything about it screams... <laughs> Disney's doing it for money and money only, and I can't take it. Um, but the un- untitled Han Solo Star Wars story will come out May 25th, 2018, where we will see Woody Harrelson do his best Woody Harrelson as Han Solo's mentor. Yep. And after 10,000 years, it's Krispy Kreme. It's time to Krispy Kreme. And we're talking about the Power Rangers you movie, of course. didn't say it in a voice. I'm really sad. Yeah, yes. after 10,000 years, it's Krispy Kreme. It's time to Krispy Kreme. <laughs> there we go, guys. Yay. Happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. But yes, you just so saved me money on going to see Power Rangers. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Personally, I felt the movie was oddly good. Uh, I had went in there with low expectations. It actually raised them. It was really good, really good origin story. Um... It was, it did sequel bait, no, I'll have to say. Oh, it's it really... sequel, no, it, it wasn't a sequel bait, they ran the sequel into you with, like, with a Mack truck. Like a train. <laughs> it was totally just the sequel There was train. also a train in the movie. Ha! Huh. Yeah. And there's apparently going to be, what, like five more? Yeah, yeah five six, more. six movie arc if they keep getting um, reactions like this, so yes. Thank you, Michael Bay. No, Michael Bay has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with the Transformers. They just yeah. keep making them. Pretty sure. decent movie. I enjoyed it. Um, of course, I had a couple of drinks while watching the movie. Pretty nice movie. Um, it, it was a departure from the other series. Um, there are a lot of things that if this happened on screen, probably would have jacked up the rating from PG-13 to maybe R. Um, but I personally have to give this movie a solid, I guess... 7 out of 10, even though for some reason on Rotten Tomatoes it's sitting at about 45%, because, of course, mixed reviews. Some people like it, some people don't. Some fan boys think that, hey, it may be the worst thing I'm, ever. <laughs> I'm really, I mean, generally, because I'm, I'm really surprised this is probably the highest you've given a movie, actually, that we've talked about. Huh. So, I mean, that's, to me speaks volumes for the movie but two what i've seen is the critics are hating it everyone who's going to go see it is loving it mostly because everything that's like weird and zany a part of power Rangers. yes it's kept, still there even kept, though it's dark exactly yeah so <laughs> they it, it's a way to do nostalgia right is what it seems billy like. is best character I alpha mean, is next best character Billy is always best character <laughs> yeah but like this billy man he's like i am william cranston <laughs> but people call me Billy, and it's it's great. He has all the best scenes, all the best lines, and Alpha has the next best scenes and the next best lines, like when he's wailing on Power Rangers because he's training them. <laughs> how was how was Brian Cranston as Zordon? The Wall. Um, he was okay. <laughs> he was kind of phoning it in. He was also kind of a dick in the movie. He was hey, really Zordon mean to is the power. A dick. No, like he was. Like, he kept calling them names and calling them unworthy and all this other stuff. He was really they being, had, like... They weren't teenagers with attitude. He had to build their attitude. Well, they were teenagers with attitude. They kind of all met in the breakfast club sort of way, where they were all in detention for some reason, even though Billy did nothing wrong, but he was in detention because they had to be there. Yeah. I've just got a weird movie mashup playing well, in my mind now. Well, I will say this. Power Rangers did actually come out on the 30th anniversary of The Breakfast Club, so... That yeah. was a fun little... Yeah. I don't think it was intentional, but that was a fun little nod. Yeah. Apparently you did not forget about them. I did not. <laughs> All right. You. Well, where can we find you guys? Well, don't you forget about me 
at Zonga Audio <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> you can find me uh, also on Twitter at Mutant Biscuit. Um, I'm on KMcDaniel28 on Instagram and Girl Friday Cause on Twitter. And if you have any comments, content suggestion, just give us a holler at zero mile at terminusmedia.com. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you guys later. Bye, guys. Bye.